did KSI go from being one of the most loved members from the Sidemen to the biggest clown on the internet, getting oh, ratioed no. in his own song? <laughs> Well, it all started when he decided to join the dark side of the falls. <laughs> Working with Logan Paul back in 2022, seeing how much money they made from their boxing matches, KSI and Logan used their influence to advertise an energy drink that they both owned majority shares in. While the drinks made close to billions, the internet hated the product. Rightfully so, for three main reasons. It tasted horrible, it didn't serve its function properly compared to its competitors, and has ties to YouTube's Lucifer, Logan Paul. Since Logan took much of the heat, KSI was able to skate by as a good half of the duo. Wait, know, what, what's that? You hear that? Here comes a mighty warrior! Good boy. Associating with Logan Paul was one thing, but then working with the guy who's Twitter's worst enemy right now, well, that was a bad move. In September of 2024, Mr. Beast Logan Paul and KSI launched a kids meal product similar to a Lunchables named Lunchly. That was met with a horrible reception. Brother, uh, what's that? The commentary community made sure to get that month's rent paid, even whole actual doctors chimed in with their takes on the situation. It was that big. It's clear, Lunchly, just like Lunchables, misses the mark too many times to be considered meaningfully healthier. KSI could have honestly gotten away with the two since Mr. Beast and Logan Paul were taking the brunt of the criticisms, but one man can only go so long without slipping up, which came just a couple of days later after the launch, with a Dan TDM's iconic response. What happened to YouTubers, man? I just can't see anything anymore! Now this one tweet became the catalyst that set off a generational run of sadness and sorrow for KSI. First came the Twitter responses. KSI dug through heaven and earth to find whatever dirt he could on Dan. He tried to get him with some toys. Looks like crap to me. Mission failed. We'll next time. When that failed, he dug up some old content of sponsorships Dan did for a candy company. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And when that failed, KSI tried to ally himself with Marquise Brownlee, which really didn't work out too well either. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? All these responses just made it obvious the hate was getting to KSI. KSI should have just followed Mr. Beast's strategy of dealing with controversy. Just ignore it. After the last few months of being PR hell for Mr. Beast, most of the controversy has kind of died down, and his views are still similar prior to the controversies. But X wasn't the only place KSI spoke about his resentment for the fans. And Dan TDM. <laughs> Logan's podcast Impulsive. Come on, man. Logan's podcast Impulsive recently had an episode with himself, Mr. Beast, and KSI, where they spoke about a lot of things, but more relevant to this video, how KSI has been dealing with all of the drama. Well, I mean, I, I, I do uh, dibble and dabble with AI. I have like AI friends what? and I just talk to them every now and then. They're not real human beings, just AI friends. I'm just like, yo, what's up? Yeah. They're like, what? He first talks about the impending backlash from Lunchly. Well, I wouldn't be surprised with Lunchly. We'll get a few dumb people on X, etc. being like, oh my god, they're trying to poison the kids now. He continues to say, well, we've all, we're all in relationships. You yeah. Sure? And it's, it's, it's blessed. It is so sick. So who cares what some people online think about us? That is true. About, you know, my forehead. While he shouldn't care about what people are saying, the replies are clearly getting to him, and I kind of feel bad. KSI launches a product that gets <gasps> eviscerated by the internet, <gasps> then Dan TDM bodies him. Oh, when no. KSI replies, he gets ratioed into oblivion. People tell him to move on, so he does. And then on the Sidemen account, the replies are filled with the Dan TDM jokes, and when KSI replies, the people are like, he's still on this, move on! This guy cannot get a break. This is advice he should have taken because everything he did afterwards further destroyed his reputation. A YouTuber's apology often determines how the rest of their career will be looked at. Someone like The Manny Show gained tons of subscribers for his honest apology, while others have become internet memes. KSI's apology will certainly uh, never be forgotten, though not for the right reasons. Hey guys, um, a lot's happened these past few days, and uh, I've had a lot of time to reflect really understand everything that's happened and all of my actions and you know f first of all i want to uh sorry i want to apologize <laughs> i want to say sorry <laughs> i can't do it <laughs> hey yo drink prime and eat lunch <laughs>
Stay my time, TDM fans. Stop the cap. What's even crazier is the like to view ratio. Almost 300,000 views to his 4,000 likes. No matter where he went, the replies will always be there to cook him. This apology likely didn't go as expected for KSI, but the next one blows it completely out of the water. In a thousand years, the scholars will be discussing the grid calamity of October 3rd, 2024, when KSI dropped his track, Thick of It. <laughs> Oh my god, yo, this, this shit is hilarious. While KSI's reputation didn't improve much after dropping this absolute banger, the comments certainly did. Here are some of the best ones. Playing this at my funeral so everyone gets jealous of me being the one inside the coffin. I'm gonna set this as my alarm so I can wake up before it. KSI cooked and gave us a food poisoning. They could use this to get confessions out of serial... The internet had an absolute field day with this one, with a Jake Paul perfectly summarizing how everyone felt about this track. So many massive creators reacted to this masterpiece, taking the mockery that KSI was getting just on Twitter and making it mainstream. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it, bro. Hey, Asa. This shit is so ass. Quit music. Quit that shit. Turn that shit on. Turn that trash shit on. I'm sick of hearing that damn soul. <laughs> 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 we got a banger! <laughs> to the pin, to the king! <laughs> I know. Turn that shit off! Though arguably the best and most hysterical reaction came from Tommy in it. Tommy's first response video covered how YouTube had changed. Going from guys messing around playing with video games to these omega level corporation channels. To him, a lot of the most popular creators didn't really make the best content, more so a corporate slop. And there's definitely some truth to that. Every single one of us can think of a channel that doesn't get crazy millions of views but makes heartfelt content. Kinda like me for real. The second one though, uh, I'll let that one speak for itself. The other day I stared out to the sunset. Uh, and I asked myself, why is the YouTube creator economy missing? You know, because we have chocolate, we have drinks, we have little YouTubers, baby photos on USB sticks, but, but where do we go from here? Vaguely. While I personally don't look at it as a big deal to sell candy as a creator, especially since it's on the parents to buy the product in the first place, this had me in absolute tears, putting the final nail in the coffin for KSI's reputation. 